Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am sharing a sneak peek from one of the newly going to be released digital stamps from Rochelle Anna Miller. I truly fell in love with each and every one and I'm trying to make cards with each and every one but I had to prioritize. Um, normally if you also follow the Rochelle Anna Miller YouTube channel you will find the sneak peeks over there. But for this release I really went out and I immediately created these two cards. So I decided to do the sneak peek here. And then on release day, the 18th of November, I will be on the Rochelle Anna Miller sharing another idea with one of the other digital stamps. About this new release, which is completely Christmas inspired and incredible as I already said. Uh, if you want to see all of the digital stamps that are coming your way um, then definitely check out Instagram, the Facebook group I am linking towards the Facebook group in the description box if you aren't following there yet um, and sharing your pro projects uh, definitely do because it's a lot of fun and there are also monthly challenges uh, where you can also win some digital stamps of your choice um, <laughs> and then there is of course the Instagram on Instagram all of the design team members are sharing inspiration using the newly coming to be released digital stamps. And on the Rochelle Anna Miller Instagram page, you can find a recap of all of the images or illustrations. And there is always a giveaway. With every new release, Rochelle Anna Miller is giving away the complete release. And it's incredible. So definitely check it out. Uh, and you never know, maybe you win the complete release. That would be awesome, I think, because you will love it. You truly will love it. Um, for my card today, as I said, this one is my Christmas stocking. And it's just adorable. It's incredible. Um, and I thought for today's card to give it a bit of a vintage vibe. So I decided to go with only browns for the coloring of my image which was a bit of a search to come up with different brown combinations so that it would vary uh, depending on the original color that you might think of. For example, here the hat and the sock, there I will add quite a dark brown combination just to represent the dark rich red that we normally tend to use. <laughs> And so I just wanted to make sure that I had different browns all over uh, instead of having the same brown next to each other. That doesn't mean that I'm not reusing the same copy combo. Uh, definitely not, I am. Uh, but I'm just trying to not have it on a part of this illustration next to another one. So that's what I did. I went for all the browns. And... You know me, normally clean and simple, um, after coloring this image I contemplated about leaving it as is. Leaving it just brown and then have my white background and all those things. Uh, but as you probably saw in the beginning, I ended up adding some distress inks, doing a bit of a, a glow, a brown glow around, a really subtle one, uh, around this image uh, to give it a more Christmassy vibe. And I think it worked. Uh, but definitely let me know what you think. Would you have left it white or would you have added color or maybe another color? I am really curious to know. Um, and then here, what I'm doing here is trying to use my lightest combination to sort of give some color to the white area that I would otherwise have done. So if I would do this this image with some color I think I would go for the regular ones with the reds greens and white um, it works but there are so many ways to color this image in and it's a lot of fun believe me so here again I'm using the same color as I used for the hat really simple as I would otherwise also see it as being red And while I was coloring the image, because, well, in the beginning there aren't any um, inspiration cards or, or anything like that, um, while I sometimes still have to figure out the image itself, 
um, so I forgot to color a part of the sock uh, in the white version of my browns um, but I will do that all but as you can see it's sort of a build up and while I'm coloring I am most of the time still discovering um, all the beauties about one of the illustrations from Rochelle Amemiller. There are a lot of details but at the same time there is a simplicity behind the details and I just love that. So here there was a part that I forgot. But it was a quick fix. It went really quick. Also for the pieces inside of the sock I'm reusing colors. Um, I'm using this color for the package as well. Then um, there is a, a small package that I will do in my lightest color. And then the bear I will do in the same color as I'm also using for the, the clothing or the pyjama, however you want to look at it, uh, and for the mouse. So a lot of returns, but depending on how you choose where to add your colors, it might not necessarily uh, be that clear for people who get your card. Um, well, that's the beauty about designing the card and the other one doesn't know actually how <laughs> you did it except when they look at my YouTube channel, uh, but <laughs> I'm not supposing that <laughs> the people around me are doing that just because it's not their passion. We are here together because it's our passion and I love sharing with you and about that. You guys are incredible. Thank you so much for all the support the, the last days, weeks um, that I got from you guys. Um, you truly make my day every time again and again. And I am blessed to have you here. Um, so thank you for all of that. Okay, about the coloring of the clothing, I wanted to clarify some things. Um, these are stripes and I wanted to have my lightest color on there and then a dark one. Now first I thought if I just do it completely with my lightest one, which is also an option, just use one color for the pyjama, whether there are stripes on it or not. So I first did the lightest one and then I went on with the darker one on top of it. I just thought that was a nice idea because uh, doing every stripe separately, it takes quite a bit of time, I don't mind it. Uh, but in this case, since the darker one would cover the light area completely, this was a quick way to already have half of it done and then just finish it off with the darker color. And there we go, just making a blend work. And you will not know that there was a lightest color on there, um, but it was really, really quick this way. I didn't set it in the beginning of the video, but as always, I am using Transotype Perfect Coloring Paper. Um, and normally I add two layers, you will see it most of the time happening. But here, in the case of uh, the stripes, I just didn't thought it was necessary. Um, since, of course, there are only this small amount of markers and the area is really tiny, so therefore I didn't add it. Uh, but if you think you need to add another layer, then you definitely do. And um, if you have a good paper, then it will be able to handle quite a lot. Uh, so definitely if you have some trouble with uh, markers that are bleeding outside of the lines, um, due to oversaturating your paper uh, maybe it's just the paper you need to change up um, I love Nina, I used Nina in the past but I switched to Transitype Perfect Coloring Paper uh, once I had an issue getting my hands on Nina um, and although I really like Nina there I sometimes had some trouble uh, that my markers were going outside of my lines however um, I liked it, so I worked around it, uh, and it's definitely an option, but this paper can handle quite a lot, actually it can handle tons of markers, and if I get at a stage where it isn't taking on the marker anymore because of satura saturation as well, then I just heat set my paper to let everything dry and give that paper a bit of time to rest, and then I go back in there. You know, there are many ways. The same way can be used uh, with other papers, just let it sit for a while or use your heat gun to speed it up and then uh, color on afterwards. 
uh, you just need to to see what works for you uh, but it's maybe something that can help so here the tiny mouse can I just can I just say that it's this tiny detail that just makes this illustration isn't it like <laughs> it's genius okay uh, that being said <laughs> here just on the final package now and then we will have some fun with creating the card itself there were some dots on the, the final package and um, lately I just go over it you don't need to have them in white I think uh, but if you want to you can um, and uh, so I just color over it and then I use my white jelly roll pen you know uh, it's the, the easiest way uh, in the past I also tried to avoid all the details but it's not always that easy so just for that I decided to do it this way okay so as you saw me just doing I die cut uh, this image using the blueprints 27 to create a lovely panel it's one of those basics that I truly adore it just gives the perfect edge and then a bit of stitching details and well What's not to like about that? So I first thought about adding a really subtle glow. So I'm using my antique linen here. Um, and I went all over the image. Uh, you can stop at a certain point. You can leave the grounding white completely if you want to. Uh, you can just go on the edges like I started with. Um, but then I thought, well, I have my image a bit more to the left. Um, if I create a glow, it needs to be around the image and not just um, the edge because I think it would work better if my image was centered um, if I would only want to add something to the edge so I went quite close to my image and um, maybe I even went over it I didn't mind uh, because this distress ink is so light um, so I was just going for it and since I also have all my white areas with a light E combination, I didn't thought that it would matter if I would go over it with the antique linen. Um, so once I had to put my fingers in my distress ink, I took a post-it and I used the back of it to adhere it sort of on my fingertips. And this way I could avoid leaving any prints. So I had that and again, you can stop right here. Uh, but then I thought, well, maybe maybe I just need to add a bit more so I added the brushed corduroy one incredible gorgeous brown ink from well I just love it it's soft but it's it's present it's well I love it so I added that and I sort of try to mimic that glow again uh, but leaving definitely enough space for the antique linen uh, because of course that's the lightest color and I really wanted to have the glowing effect and therefore it's best to have a really light color right next to your image. For example, if you're doing a moon and you want to have an incredible glow from the moon, then you can do a really subtle tumbled glass around the moon and then work your way outside um, with darker and darker blues or whatever color you want to use. So I did that and then... <laughs> Well, at a certain point, once you get blending, it's hard to stop, if you get what I mean. So I added a bit of walnut stain, um, mostly in the corner where I had a lot of space, of course. Um, as my image is more onto the left area, I had quite, quite a lot of space on the right one, so I thought maybe another color could add something. Um, so I did that and I decided to also leave a bit of a glow on the bottom of my card a little bit um, Well, just because the image is There can be more <laughs> Towards it. So I left it like that and then I took my holiday scripts from Pretty Pink Posh and Many ways again to use this one. I love the script of the sentiments. I love it and you have a tiny word and then a scripty word and it's perfect um, there were also dice for the scripty words, so you can definitely do some heat embossing. I did that, you can see it uh, on the left, well, top left 
of my work surface. I did that. Uh, I didn't like the white because I had all the ink blending done. So I did the ink blending and I didn't like that either. So I just decided to leave that idea aside and use my gold embossing powder straight on top of my panel. I wanted to have a sentiment but at the same time you don't need it. But I think I would have placement a bit different if I wouldn't use the sentiment. Uh, so I wanted it to be present but in a subtle way. And this gold, it's the gold from L'Enfant, is gorgeous and it shines, you know. So I did that and then I also did the same for my second part of my sentiment, wishes. Use again the gold embossing powder. And once I removed all of the excess embossing powder, I also heat set it. Now, if you have some excess embossing powder in tiny areas, then try to use something like a craft knife or tweezers. It's way handier than uh, a brush because with a brush you can, of course, um, well, mistakenly uh, get rid of your sentiment itself. Uh, so I use a brush all around, but when it goes well, when it's all about the details, I really think it helps to, to use a craft knife or anything like that. So I adhered this panel using some foam tape on my car base because it was a bit, well, bulked by, um, by the heat embossing. And then I decided to add some final details, some uh, itty bitty stars, these are the matte gold, I love matte gold. <laughs> um, and once I did that, it's a really, really subtle detail, just like the sentiment is quite subtle uh, with the gold on the brown. But I think that the recipient will appreciate it. And definitely on the pictures, you will also see it. Uh, but it's just subtle in the background. It's all about this image, personally. Um, and I just love it. I tried some more places to add stars, but it wasn't needed, in my opinion. And then this is my card. A really vintage only browns card here um, to show you as a sneak peek for the new release by Rochelle Anna Miller. Again, this one is going to be released with some incredible other ones on the 18th of November. So definitely check it out. You will love it all. Thank you so much for stopping by. I truly appreciate it. I wish you an incredible day and I'll be back soon. Bye!